Hey, what's up? This is MarketAlchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix. Today we're going to deploy a very simple app to Heroku. First, I want to go over some limitations. All connections are limited, both the number you can open and how long you can keep them open. So if you're planning on using Phoenix to make a massive chat app, for example, Heroku might not be your best option. Similarly, you can't do distributed clustering. And once again, if you wanted to do some sort of a massively distributed OTP app, Heroku may not be the best option. And it also kills off in-memory state, such as what you'd see in agents, gen servers, or ETS every 24 hours. Now if you're using this like we did before, a few episodes back, where we used ETS as kind of a caching layer, like you would with Redis or something like that, then it's fine. But if you're not using a database at all, and you're keeping all of your state in memory, then these restarts could be a major, major problem. And finally, you can't remote shell in and you can't uh, use some of the observer tools. That said, if your plan is to use Phoenix as a faster Rails or a faster Node.js, something like that, then you should have no problems using it on Heroku. And in fact, due to the better performance, it will mitigate what's probably Heroku's biggest downside. That is the high cost as you scale up. Today's video assumes you've already gone through the very basic setup of Elixir and Phoenix on your computer. If you haven't done that, go to alchemist.camp slash episodes, scroll down to lesson one and go through that and then come back here. But once that's done, we're gonna to go to signup.heroku.com and fill out an account. This will make it a new account just for this. And well, I'm a hobbyist. And my programming language is Elixir. It doesn't seem like they have anything that starts with me. I use another language. I'm not a robot. All right. I are a little aggressive about confirming accounts, but I'm doing that off screen right now. All right. Now I've got to set a password, which I guess I'll do off screen. Okay, then once we're logged in, the easiest way to get to the tool belt is actually to make a new app. So I'll just create a default one. Broke will pick a name. And then we click over here on Heroku CLI, and it gives us some downloaders for whatever system we have. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna get both the Windows one and the Unix one since I'm running uh, uh, Ubuntu under the WSL. All right, now everything is installed on my machine. Turns out this option does not work for WSL, and that's because Snap requires system D. So I just went down here to the Ubuntu Debian instructions and that worked fine. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a new Phoenix project. I'll go full screen and bump the font size up just a little bit. So we'll just mix phoenix.new and we'll call our app hello. Now that we've created a Phoenix app we'll change to that directory so go to hello. Next we'll initialize a git repo and we'll create a new app on Heroku. And that's with Heroku Create. But since it's not one of the supported languages, we need to manually specify a build pack. I've got this one from the Elixir docs. It's https github.com slash hash nuke Heroku build pack elixir.git. There are two build packs for Elixir. One of them is this one. The other one is for static assets. That looks good. We'll add the one for static assets now. And that is Roku build packs colon add. And then we give it an address, which is also some random Git repository. GitHub.com and gjldon slash Heroku dash build pack dash phoenix dash static dot git. And I will put links to both of these on the episode page on alchemist.cam. Before we push this to Heroku, there are a few changes we need to make. I'll just scroll by mouse so you can see where this is. So the app name is hello. Inside lib, we'll go to web and then channels. Open our user socket here. We'll add a timeout since Heroku limits how long you can keep a socket open. Uh, it'll just be timeout and set it to 45 seconds. 
save that, close lib, and go up to config. Then you can see in config we've got prod.secrets.exs. Heroku actually doesn't use this. It keeps all secrets stored as uh, system variables. So we're going to delete this file completely. And then in prod.exs, we will not import the secret file that we just deleted. We'll go up to the top and close the terminal here. In our app's main endpoint configuration, we're going to add one line, and that'll tell it where to get the secret key in production. That will be from the system environment variables on Heroku. So secret key base, and let's go to map.fetch system dot get env secret key base next we'll get rid of all of these comments here and we'll copy over the database configuration from dev to production make a couple changes to that we won't pass it a username password or the name of a database or a host name and we'll change the pool size from 10 to 18 that's because Heroku's maximum is 20, and as per the instructions in the Phoenix docs, we want to have close to the maximum pool size, and this will allow two for running our mixed tasks when we need to do that. We'll be using SSL, so we'll set that to true, and we'll also get the URL from the system environment variables, just like we did above. So system.getenv database URL. And a couple other things we have to do for SSL to work. We're going to, have to change this scheme in the URL up here to HTTPS. And we'll change the port to 443. Actually, the host is not going to be example.com. It's going to be whatever Heroku generated for us. Secure depths 27862. Dot Heroku app dot com. This should work. Uh, we could also force SSL by adding one more line. We'll do that here. Force SSL rewrite on and x forwarded proto. That SSL should work, and if we go to HTTP, we'll automatically be forwarded to HTTPS. Now we need to add another file to the root of our directory called proc file. In our proc file, we're just going to have web mix environment equals prod so that Heroku is always running in production mix phoenix.server. We can also make a config file for our build pack. So we'll do that here. Elixir build pack dot config. And inside of this build pack config, we can basically just set the versions of uh, Erlang and Elixir that we want to use and pass it some other options. So you can see here, set the Erlang version and the Elixir version. This option on line three, you might want to change. Always rebuild. It's faster if it's set to false. However, if you end up with some sort of problem where things are not working on Heroku, but they are locally, it could be because you've got some, some stale files. So in that case, just change it to always rebuild equals true. And you're going to want a runtime path of the app. And still got a few tasks left in the command line, starting with adding a database. Do that with Heroku add-ons. Create Heroku Postgres QL hobby dev which is the free tier. It's probably not something you want to use on a real app, but if you're just experimenting with it, seeing how everything works, that's definitely one to go with. I'm going to pass the pull size setting I mentioned earlier up to Heroku. So we'll do that with Heroku config set pool size equals 18. We'll use the other two for our mix task. We might have to run that again after adding our changes to git, but for now let's continue on. Uh, we're going to make a secret using 
Phoenix a secret generator for our secret key base. Mix phoenix.gen.secret. Okay, here is our secret. We'll copy that and paste that into a Heroku config. Heroku config set secret key base equals that key that we just copied. All right, with that, let's add our changes. Commit them. And git push Heroku master. Looks like the build failed on Heroku. I'll pause and figure it out. All right, everything is successfully pushed to Heroku. I did make one tiny change here, which was making the Elixir version of my mix file match what's in the build pack and on my machine. But the problem that we were just running into was actually a lot more subtle than that. The proc file and the build pack were both, they both had the right contents, but the line endings were CRLF. And that's because I recently reinstalled Visual Studio Code and on Windows, it makes them CRLF by default. And apparently Heroku just chokes on it, but after I changed it to LF, running the exact same uh, push worked just fine. Let's see, git push Heroku master, I did nothing different there. Let's open up the app. And let's see, we have a standard Phoenix app up and running. If you found this useful, then click subscribe, click the bell, and you will get more videos like it. Till next time, see you on alchemist.camp.